Hello, this is Pavel. When you are building a distributed system, you need to choose the right technology that will connect all the parts of your system together so they can communicate. And it's um, hard to choose the right te connectivity tool because there are a lot of them and uh, they have different parameters, different use cases, their main purpose is usually different. So uh, you have to carefully compare them. And when you are comparing data distribution service technology or Kafka technology, and you think that they will be the best for your use case, in this video, I will tell you what are the similarities, what are what are the differences of these technologies and what are the main purpose of these technologies and then you could easily choose and decide if these technologies are right for you so let's go let's go let's start so What is the DDS technology? DDS technology is fully distributed. The, the, the central is fully decentralized communication platform for real-time data sharing between devices and applications. And uh, this technology has ability to tune the data sharing parameters through QoS parameters, so you can configure it. What is uh, Apache Kafka? Apache Kafka is a different beast because it's fully it's distributed system, a distributed streaming platform uh, for data processing, and you can process also the historical data, and all of that you can do it in real time. So, when I go to similarities of these technologies, both technologies are standards. DDS is object man management group standard and Apache Kafka is de facto standard. So when you choose to use these technologies, you can connect with other companies and other systems that use this technology. Both these technologies facilitate the creation of distributed system because these technologies are designed to connect pieces of the architecture together. But each does this in different way. Both technologies are event-driven. They are based on event-driven architecture. They use publish subscribe communication model and this helps to uh, create the system where the components and parts are, are loosely coupled. So they don't know, they don't have to have uh, knowledge about the other party. So and this facilitates integration and also this facilitates real time data sharing because it's asynchronous communication. Both technologies are data centric because these uh, data are decoupled from applications. Data are within the system and the application can read the data and process them and these data are not owned by applications but they are shared among applications so and these data are shared and not copied and the part the important part is that the data model is known and shared. You know the data model ahead. Both platforms are scalable. They can respond to growing number of data publishers and subscribers. So the system can be larger and larger to some extent. Both technologies support compatible changes in data models. So the system can evolve through time. You know that changes are inevitable so you need to have some uh, possibilities to extend the system and 
the extension of the system is based on usually based on uh, data models. So DDS has DDS X types specification that allows to extend the data models and Kafka uses Avro, Protobuf and JSON and they have some possibilities to extend it and don't break the backward and forward compatibility. And Kafka also has schema registry that checks if the schema, when it's Avro schema, uh, is uh, uh, compatible with previous versions. All, uh, both, both uh, technologies uh, can provide high data throughput. They are very performant and uh, they provide high data availability. Because it's a distributed system, DDS is peer-to-peer -peer network and uh, Kafka is uh, as well distributed because they use uh, clusters of brokers. Uh, they are highly, uh, the data are highly available. But it, it is a cost that uh, it, the data are eventually consistent because there are some uh, communication between the parties and when the event occurs, the data needs to travel some distance. Then uh, the, um, the both technologies have uh, transmission and access security. Security is important. Both technologies provide it in its own way. And uh, these systems are usually des are designed, not usually, but, but they are designed to larger distributed systems. You can, uh, when you are building small system, you probably choose different technology because uh, there is a learning curve in both technologies that you need to, you need to, it, take, it takes time to learn these technologies. All right, those are similarities. And let's go to differences. So Apache Kafka is fully decentralized because uh, it's it's peer-to-peer -peer, uh, communication. The participants in the systems are uh, discovered. On the other hand, Kafka is centralized because there is a central bro broker. This broker can be clustered. There is a lot of brokers, but you still need to have an information where the cluster is. Uh, DDS uses publish subscribe model for communication as well as Kafka, but the DDS is uh, push based. So the data are pushed from producers to consumers. And this is because we can't afford any latency or any, uh, any I would say it, uh, you need to provide these data to subscribers as soon as possible. So the data model is pushed, or data are pushed. On the other hand, Kafka pushes the data to, uh, from producers to broker, but from broker, the consumers pull the data. And this is because uh, the Kafka is usually is used for uh, high data uh, volumes and the uh, consumers uh, want to uh, fight against the uh, back pressure. So they pull the data so they can process them. And they are not overwhelmed by data. Next, uh, the DDS technology is data centric. Uh, it uses uh, IDL, Interface definition, definition Language, for description of data that are shared among all the parts of the system. And the technology understands the data, so it can tune, fine-tune the communication between uh, publishers and uh, subscribers. On the other hand, Kafka is message-centric message centric technology so uh, it's something different because um, 
Kafka treats every data as a stream of bytes and uses Avro, Protobuf, JSON for describing the data, but the technology is unaware of the data. All right, next, uh, in DDS, the data are stored mainly in memory. You can choose to store it in uh, the database, like a persistent storage, so uh, the system can uh, survive the problems with communication or when some nodes crash, for example. So you want it for the high availability. On the other hand, Kafka stores all data in the disk. So it's persistent and you, let's say, can't lose any data because you want to process all of them. Next, uh, the latency in uh, latency of DDS is counted in microseconds, but Kafka counting latency in milliseconds. So if you need to uh, count data in microseconds, you maybe should look for DDS. Uh, DDS is uh, designed for unreliable links because it's uh, reli reliable communication um, part, let's say. Uh, it provides reliable communication also over unreliable links. They can recover from the packet loss or latency issues. On the other hand, Kafka needs the reliable communication and infrastructure to communicate well or to function well. Next, um, uh, DDS provides information about uh, applications and data about their state, if the application is in the system, if not. Uh, so, for example, on the other hand, Kafka doesn't provide any information about about the application, everything is loosely coupled. So when you need to have this information about the, about the uh, components of your system, about the state, DDS provide, can provide it. All right, these are differences. Those were differences. And what about main advantages? So I will summarize it as, uh, as this, because DDS can automatically discover other peers. So you can have a zero configuration setup of your system. DDS has ability to control data transfer properties by configuring QoS parameters. So you can fine tune your performance and efficiency when you need it. And um, it's uh, suitable also for unreliable links. Kafka. Kafka is uh, a distributed storage of large volumes of data that are accessible for data processing by application. And uh, this is their advantage. And it, it's its advantage. So you can easily integrate with various application because all data are let's say on the same place and uh, you can connect it and the, the, the data can be read uh, in different times because these data are stored there all right these were main advantages and what about when we take a look on the main purpose main purpose Let's the DDS technology data distribution service is uh, designed and its main purpose is for real-time communication between physical devices so 
even though however it can also be used for communication between data centers but it's uh, it's not the main purpose of this technology so data sharing between physical devices is the main purpose and uh, this technology is good in reliability because uh, it, it, the, the technology has a reliability protocol that can serve the, for the purpose uh, when your links are, are unreliable and the technology uh, can fine-tune the performance and efficiency parameters so this technology can provide uh, very low latencies and high throughput. What are the use cases for this technology? You would use DDS technology in, uh, for example, when you are building an autonomous, autonomous vehicles or when you are building robotics, you play with robots, or when you are building a smart grid because <coughs> their latencies are crucial. Now, for the Kafka, uh, Kafka is designed for data processing of large volumes of data. Usually it's connected with some data centers. However, it can also be used on the edge when, uh, where you need to process uh, data from the sensors. It can be, it's completely fine. And it, they are use cases that it's uh, used that way. But the main purpose is in data centers for large volume process, uh, large data volume processing. And it's used usually in enterprise, within the enterprise or when you need to share and process data among the enterprises. And the focus here is on scalability because it can process tremendous volume of data. What are the use cases? The, the use cases, so for example, are for example uh, high throughput activity tracking, like on the websites, or uh, large data streams processing, or event sourcing when you put all your data to one place, to the cluster, and you can uh, provide audit or analytics on that data. So these are the, uh, let's say, use cases for those technologies. And as you can see, these technologies are totally very, very, very different. And serve different purposes and this leads me to this leads me to the summary so uh, as i as i said these are different technologies so you probably don't uh, have you don't have hard times to decide for what the technology is best for so even though that Apache Kafka is not suitable for communication, because Apache Kafka is not suitable for communication with uh, physical devices, and on the other hand, Kafka is not suitable for processing of historical data. So different technologies, but now you know what are the strengths and weaknesses of these technologies, and you can decide it, decide if. Uh, the best or the right choice for your system is data distribution service or Kafka, but they can easily be used together because DDS can be used for communication with sensors and within sensors. And when you need to process the data from the sensors, for, for example, for a predictive maintenance, you can push those data to the Kafka cluster and do all the analytics there and processing so that's it i hope that this video helped you to comprehend these technologies better and uh, if you want this uh, mind map you can go to my website pavelpohanka.cz slash ds kafka all right bye bye